24 hours ago, Google DeepMind released a report for Gemini 1.5 Pro, a highly compute-efficient multimodal mixture of experts model. Relative to previous models like Gemini 1 Pro, GPT-4 Turbo, and Claude 2.1, Gemini 1.5 Pro has a much longer context window. That allows it to reason over long videos or documents when answering questions. For example, when given the 402-page transcripts from Apollo 11's mission to the moon, it can reason about conversations, events, and details found across the document. In this video, I'll walk through the paper and some of the key results. Gemini 1.5 Pro is built to handle extremely long contexts. It has the ability to recall and reason over fine-grained information from up to at least 10 million tokens. To show this, they did some needle-in-a-haystack analysis, inspired by the work of Greg Kamrat. Greg took essays from the legendary collection of writing by Silicon Valley Papa Bear, Paul Graham. A warning, this is a dangerous website if you have already made your to-do list for the day. This video is already later than planned because I found some new essays I hadn't read yet, and I lack the willpower to not read a Paul Graham essay. Okay, back to the test. Greg uses Paul Graham essays as background tokens. Then, he places a random statement within the document at various depths. The particular fact used is, the best thing to do in San Francisco is eat a sandwich and sit in Dolores Park on a sunny day. This statement provides the needle, and the essays are the haystack. Greg then asks GPT-4 to answer this question by placing the needle and the haystack into its context. He looked at context lengths all the way up to 128,000 tokens. The y-axis here of depth is how far into the context window the needle is placed. At the top means it's near the start of the document. At the bottom, it's near the end of the document. 100% accuracy is colored green. Overall, you can see that the results are pretty good. But as you get closer to 128,000 tokens, GPT-4 wasn't always able to answer correctly, particularly if the statement was placed somewhere in the first half of the context window. Using that same idea, Gemini 1.5 Pro was able to achieve near-perfect needle recall up to 1 million tokens of haystack, and that is in all modalities, i.e. text, video, and audio. You can see that for up to 3 hours of video, 22 hours of audio, or 7 million words, recall is close to perfect. There are a lot of green squares showing successful retrieval, and only a few red boxes showing unsuccessful retrieval, and that's regardless of depth or number of tokens. To show the value of this long context, they demonstrate learning to translate a new language from a single set of linguistic documentation. With only instructional materials, 500 pages of linguistic documentation, a dictionary, and approximately 400 parallel sentences, all provided in context, Gemini 1.5 Pro is capable of learning to translate from English to Kalamang. That's a language thought to have just 134 native speakers worldwide. As a result, it has almost no online presence. They find that the quality of the Gemini translations is comparable to that of a person who has learned from the same materials. Perhaps most interestingly, this leap in long context performance does not come at the expense of the core multimodal capabilities of the model. In fact, Gemini 1.5 Pro greatly surpasses Gemini 1 Pro, performing better on the vast majority of benchmarks, and even performs better than Gemini 1 Ultra on more than half the benchmarks considered, despite using significantly less training compute and being more efficient to serve. Okay, let's look at model architecture. Gemini 1.5 Pro is a sparse Mixture of Expert, or MOE, transformer-based model that builds on Gemini 1's research advances and multimodal capabilities. Sparse mixtures of experts are an idea that goes back to the early 90s, from Jacobs, Jordan, Nowlin, and Hinton, in their work on adaptive mixtures of local experts. They proposed a system with a gating network that guides a selector to stochastically select a single expert's output from amongst a pool. Some notable recent development in this direction came in the work Outrageously Large Neural Networks, the sparsely gated mixture of experts layer, from Google in 2017, which also had Hinton as an author. 26 years later, the basic idea is to use conditional computation, where parts of the network are active on a per-example basis, to let you scale up capacity without scaling up compute to the same degree. 
they introduced a mixture of experts layer that could be plugged into a model. You'll see that this looks a little familiar. You have a gating network and a bunch of experts. The gating network looks at the input and decides which experts are going to process it and effectively switches the others off so that they don't contribute to computation. This is achieved here with a softmax gating function, which is coupled with noisy top K gating to select a sparse subset of the experts on each example. This doesn't seem very gradient friendly. Still, everything tends to work out. In fact, this paper includes the memorable sentence, while this form of sparsity creates some theoretically scary discontinuities in the output of the gating function, we have not yet observed this to be a problem in practice. Much of this work focused on addressing performance challenges so that this architecture could be run efficiently. There has also been lots of other work on MREs. Another example is unified scaling laws for routed language models, which looks at how validation loss varies as a function of model capacity and as a function of the number of experts. Another influential work was switch transformers, which simplified MREs and improved their stability using only one expert per token in their switch transformer encoder block and demonstrating impressive gains in pre-training efficiency over dense transformers. Let's now turn to training infrastructure and the dataset. Gemini 1.5 Pro is trained on multiple 4096 chip pods of Google's TPU v4 accelerators distributed across multiple data centers. I found this interesting given that TPU v5P pods are available on Google Cloud and are significantly beefier than the v4 TPU pod. Of course, it's possible that all the v5 TPUs are currently monopolized by Gemini 1.5 Ultra. We don't learn too much about the pre-training dataset, which includes data sourced across many different domains, including web documents and code, and incorporates image, audio, and video content. Gemini 1.5 Pro follows the now familiar recipe of first instruction tuning on a collection of multimodal data containing paired instructions and appropriate responses. And finally, there is further tuning based on human preference data. Let's jump to long context evaluation. First, we can see some qualitative examples of multimodal long context abilities. Here, 1.5 Pro is given the entire JAX core code base consisting of 746,152 tokens and asked in what file is the backward pass for auto differentiation implemented in JAX. The model tells us the location of the function and gives us the appropriate code snippet. That's a pretty useful functionality for coders. In this example, the full text of Les Miserables is passed to the model together with look at the event in this drawing, what page is this on? And a stick man drawing of one man giving the other some candles. 1.5 Pro identifies the page and the poignant scene in which the bishop saves Jean Valjean. In this example, 1.5 Pro is prompted with a 44 minute Buster Keaton movie and asked, tell me some key information from the piece of paper that is removed from the person's pocket and the time code of that moment. The model has no trouble in achieving this. A follow-up prompt gives a sketch of a man being sprayed by water and asks, what is the time code when this happens? Again, the model is able to find the scene. The next experiment examines the negative log likelihood of token prediction on held out text and code. The fact that in both cases, the negative log likelihood continues to decrease as we go far out to the right, even to the 10 million mark in the case of code, suggests that 1.5 Pro is able to make use of the full context window of preceding tokens to keep improving its predictions. Interestingly, the authors note that the trend is something of a power law that's shown here with the blue dashed line. In the particular case of code, there are occasionally cases when blocks are repeated, so sometimes going out to 10 million tokens allows for unreasonably good predictions, better than the power law. Earlier, we saw how 1.5 Pro can achieve impressive needle in a haystack retrieval. A second experiment looks at a more challenging setting, which requires retrieving 100 unique needles in a single turn. Here, the x-axis is the number of tokens in context, and the y-axis is recall. The red dots are GPT-4 Turbo, while all the blue dots are 1.5 Pro, which you can see is better up to 128k tokens, and retains much of its performance out to 1 million tokens. We'll now jump to core capability evaluations across text, vision, and audio. On text, 1.5 Pro outperforms not only one Pro, but also the one Ultra model. For vision, it's better than Ultra at video understanding, but a bit weaker on image understanding. Finally, on audio, its performance falls between one Pro and one Ultra. 
though closer to Pro than to Ultra. For some of the most widely contested specific benchmarks, 1.5 Pro gets 81.9% 5 shot on MMLU, 58.5% 4 shot on Math, and 71.9% 0 shot on Human Eval Coding. The next experiment looks at how well 1.5 Pro follows instructions across a broad range of tasks as judged by human raters. Here, it does a better job than both 1 Pro and 1 Ultra. Now we come to responsible deployment. This includes an impact assessment, which addresses the additional consequences of long context understanding across modalities. There are model mitigations that involve supervised fine tuning and RLHF using a reward model. Then there are model safety evaluations on text-to-text -text evaluations that use human raters to compare outputs from safety-focused prompts. 1.5 Pro improves slightly on 1 Pro and 1 Ultra. It also improves on image-to-text evaluations. There are other tests that look at representational harms, which suggest that the model behaves broadly similarly to its predecessors, albeit with a slightly higher refusal rate on image-to-text tests. I'll mention one final part of the paper. There's an interesting discussion under long context evaluations, call to action. This suggests that current benchmarks often fail to adequately stress test models like Gemino 1.5 Pro, as they are typically designed for evaluating shorter context models. As such, there is a pressing need for innovative evaluation methodologies that can effectively assess model performance on very long context tasks while minimizing the burden of human labeling. So, if you have ideas for such benchmarks, it's time to get coding. That's it, we've reached the end. I hope you have a wonderful day.